I have just created the fastest 2D dynamic lighting system ever made in Game Maker Studio. It can have as much as 5,000 lights without dipping below 60 frames per second. It is also incredibly simple to make compared to other lighting systems out there. The best part is, I will be sharing you the secret of how I did this for free right now. Before we continue, I would like to tell you that it took me several months to come up with this lighting system. So, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Every subscriber is big news to me. Also, if you have other game dev friends, feel free to share this video. I am sure there are many game devs out there who would love to learn what I am about to show you all. So, what is the 2D Dynamic Lighting System? It is a system that allows light to cast shadows behind walls and the system should still work even when the lights and walls are moving. That's what makes it dynamic. The same system could also be used for line of sight, like in Among Us. The biggest challenge in making a dynamic lighting system is being able to make multiple lights without lagging the game. There are two different approaches in making such system. The ray casting approach and the shadow casting approach. The ray casting approach is additive, where it starts with complete darkness, then is lit up with rays casted by the light source. The shadow casting approach is subtractive, where it starts with complete illumination, then is darkened by the shadow regions behind the walls. The advantage of ray casting is it can draw all the lights on just one surface texture, whereas in shadow casting, each light needs to be drawn on a separate surface before being transferred to the main surface. The disadvantage of ray casting, however, is it is slower than shadow casting. Each ray needs to iterate through all the wall edges to determine how far the ray can go. Shadow casting, on the other hand, only needs the light position and the wall corners to determine the shaded area. My implementation uses the shadow casting approach, but with a twist. Instead of illuminating, then cutting out the shadows, we can block the surface texture, then draw the light. That way, we can repeat this process on the same surface without affecting the other lights. This is inspired by the speed spray pairs I've seen on YouTube recommendation, where they block off part of the canvas before spray painting over. Who knew those recommendations will prove to be useful? With a shadow casting disadvantage out of the way, it seemed like shadow casting is now far superior than ray casting. My system was able to go up to 1000 lights at 60 frames per second, but that was still not the best. Another developer called Fatal Sleep made his own lighting system called Quick Ray Trace or QRT. As the title suggests, he used the ray tracing approach, but with a twist. Instead of calculating the ray distance on the CPU, he used the GPU instead, boosting the performance immensely handling up to 1,500 lights at 60 frames per second. That is 50% more than my implementation. I thought to myself, maybe we can do something similar like transfer the shadow region calculations from the CPU to the GPU. But how? There was no way to construct the shadow regions in the GPU and each light had its own set of shadows to construct. I thought about this for several months, but never came up with a good solution. Then, one day, it dawned upon me. It turns out that constructing the shadow region on the CPU is indeed inevitable, but there is a way to construct just one shadow region to be the template for all shadows. This shadow template will be passed through a shader along with the light position, then we let the GPU reposition the end corners of the shadow region based on the light position and the initial template position. We then repeat this process for every light, reusing the same shadow template. This boosted my light system to handle 5 times more lights. That is 5,000 lights in 60 frames per second, more than 3 times more powerful than Fatal Sleep's implementation. There is, however, one thing that Fatal Sleep's lighting system could do that mine couldn't, which is handling irregular shaped walls with ease. It is impossible for my implementation to do this, as it was designed to use the wall corners to calculate the shadow regions. So, instead of trying to beat Fatal Sleep in his own game, I created something that his implementation could not do, and that is Edge Lighting. Edge Lighting is a lighting effect that illuminates and casts shadows on the solid walls. A good example of this effect being used is in the game Cario. 
Notice how the solid walls have different shape. Not even the game Celeste has this effect. Before we can implement this, we need to change how we cast our shadows. Naturally, we use the edges of the solid object as our walls, but a smarter approach is to use the diagonals instead. Not only does this allow us to use edge lighting, it also cuts the number of walls used by half. Next, we redraw the solid walls completely black on a separate surface texture, blur it inwards using shaders, then draw it to the main surface. And there you have it, a working edge lighting. Now, if this video is not enough, I will be making a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the lighting system in Game Maker Studio, just like how I did it in the Snake tutorial. It will cover everything from the fundamentals to the post-processing to give you high performance and high quality lighting system in the simplest way possible. If you want to keep updated, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't so you won't miss the upcoming tutorials. I have also provided links down in the description below of several blog posts that help make my own lighting system, including one from Noel Bear, the lead programmer of Celeste. Until then, have a great day.